I wish to extend my warm welcome to the first lady of Kisumu County, the Deputy Governor Kisumu County, Professor Kamarogo. We have a team from Intergovernmental Relations Section Committee, IGRTC, Lilet Mavu. I also want to recognize in our midst all the county executive committee members together with all county working environment for staff. The public service board. In addition, honorable members, we are working on the completion of the 
They are among the people in the teaching and referral hospital cancer center in partnership with a Russian company on a joint venture. And the sickle cell management center in collaboration with the 40th hospital from New Delhi, India. Mr. Speaker, sir, I will be doing a service for the health document if I did not elaborate on our other ambitious programs at the Jamal Mudinga Teaching and Reform Hospital. Over the last two years, Jamal Mudinga Teaching and Reform Hospital made great strides in various endeavors. The facility served 305 and 89 plants. This included 1,791 major operations and 868 minor surgeries, mainly for routine surgeries, cleft tip repair, and oncology surgeries, just mentioned not a few. Due to the good relationship we have with our partners, the facility recently widened its scope in the management of cancer and other conditions by bringing on board a maximum of facial aid, a maximum of facial specialists and guidance on colonies. The two are expected to deliver quality and high specialist services to patients who would otherwise travel many miles for treatment in India and other places. Our women diagnosed with ovarian cancer, endometrial or uterine cancer, uh, cancer and gestational trophoblastic disease. We now experience improved services. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to confirm that I am a beneficiary. I of our highly specialized medical counsel that the Ramon teaching a reform hospital. I underwent a very delicate surgery on my back at the facility, and I can assure you that indeed the Ramon Yogodinga teaching reform hospital is a facility, all with the national standards, with very competent and highly professional doctors and nurses. But this does not mean that we have closed all the gaps in our healthcare delivery. Honorable members, just recently, JTRH acquired the gaseous laparoscopic trial, the gaseous laparoscopic infrastructure that ensures death pay during Sunday. Remember that one when you've been having Sunday. Ask for lapo, lapo. This technology also ensures that the surgery is carried out without opening up the patient's body. Imagine that. We just lie there at first without opening the body. Good. Another new acquisition is the new MRI equipment, a first of its kind in the region, and a special donation from the Bill Gates Foundation. The list is of new innovative services is long. The list of new innovative services is long, and we don't need to tell it all today. The setting up of the hematology center will boost the function of an infection control center run by a group of about 35 people, strictly adhering to infection control guidelines, as infections should be kept at bay for those who are born to transplant. This intervention will also cover the treatment of sickle cell disease is almost one of the highest burdens of sickle cell. With one out of every five children affected with blood disorder. Other infrastructure development of the city facility include the Gwe Funeral Home, which, although vandalized during the demonstration, has now been restored to a former center and will be offering executive mock services in the western region. And ultra modern kitchen whose construction is at 80% completion. So make sure that when you finally finish the journey of this earth, you leave a room, a will, that the one will be taken to the prayer funeral home in the Ramon. You lie in peace until you get to heaven. Or hell is the best place. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to pause there and give you an opportunity for us to show you a short bit documentary while I also take a break because this is a matter of another speech. Thank you very much. Uh, documentary, please. Mr. Speaker, sir, agriculture is the backbone of our economy and continues to play a critical role in ensuring that our county is food secure. 
Our government, through partnership, recorded remarkable achievements in boosting food production in the county to improve the area under irrigation, increase agricultural productivity, and build resilience to climate change risks through a partnership with the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture. We trained and supported 255 farmer groups across three value chains of cassava, chicken, and soga in six wards in the county. In building resilience to climate change risks in the targeted smallholder farming areas, we put up 10 water pumps and boreholes serving more than 500 households. These include Kodikre water pump and auxiliary structures in central Nyakach ward in Nyakach sub-county, Holo Orucho water pump and auxiliary structures in East Kano, Wawili ward, Nyando sub-county, Gemra irrigation scheme and Kalo borehole both in Nyakach. Others include the CIN CC3 irrigation project on Kabonyo Kanyagwal, a watch canoe irrigation project in Nyando, Kaloka Bohol and Banda Works in East Sydney, and Chiga irrigation project in Kolua East, Kisumu East Sub County, among others. Honorable members, to help our farmers make informed decisions on weather patterns and planting cycles, our government has so far registered 22,763 farmers with a department's digitization program. These farmers are receiving agro weather information through their mobile phones to help them make informed decisions. In a bid to scale up existing interventions around productivity, our government is working closely with the national government's National Agriculture Value Chain Development Project to increase market participation and value addition for targeted farmers in select value chains in our area. My administration has prioritized five value chains, including, as you saw in the documentary, chicken, dairy, tomatoes, cotton, and rice value chains that have been validated at the national level. Additionally, the national government has hired 45 supervisors at different levels and 600 enumerators to help in the farmer profiling exercise in Kusumu County ahead of the, the National Agricultural Validation Development Program commencement. Mr. Speaker, sir, we continue to make significant strides toward enhancing rice productivity and reducing milling costs for our farmers in the rice subsector. We have installed a new rice mill in Ahero that awaits commissioning to begin operations. We believe that this project will enhance rice cultivation by 500 hectares. In addition, the expansion of areas of rice irrigation and mapping of more schemes such as Southwest Canoe Irrigation Schemes has improved food and nutrition security within the project area. Enhanced extension services to rice farmers have also led to improved productivity and household incomes. Under fisheries, my administration has achieved several milestones, including the distribution of 84,400 kilograms of fish feeds to 582 farmers, thereby contributing directly to an overall projected fish production increase of 125 metric tons by December 2023. There was also direct assistance to 7,752 fisher folks who are supported with 282 pond liners to address seepage challenges and 587 predator kits to ensure production is not impaired. Additionally, 459 farmers and four public primary schools have also been supported 463, 300 fingerlings, each receiving 1,000 pieces. We also provided fish fingerlings and fish feed to worth 3 million shillings to fishermen who lost fish during the massive death of fish in cages at Ogal Beach. And I'm sure some of you were there when we were giving them this money. On youth empowerment through aquaculture, 38 youth entrepreneurs were trained in fish entrepreneurship 
and their direct, direct contribution is projected to in, inject an additional 11 million shillings into the sector by the end of this year. Mr. Speaker, sir, we are aware that local farmers will face challenges of access to capital and, most importantly, high quality feed. To bridge this gap, we have partnered with Aquaretch, either Aquaretch or Aquaretch. You can choose which you want. You want Aquaretch or Aquaretch. To bridge this gap, we have partnered with Aquaretch, a Kisumu based startup company, to improve small scale farmer economics and promote the overall growth of the aquaculture industry. And this is initiated by somebody who is an indigenous Kisumu resident. Aquaretch is working to streamline the production behind fish farming with a mobile app platform that allows manufacturers, farmers, and buyers to trade, buy, and sell quality fish feed, as well as learn best aquaculture practices and how to improve their incomes. As you know, at the moment, we depend on importing fish food, mainly from Uganda. And it becomes rather expensive for farmers. We have realized that we can actually develop fish feed here, especially using the rice products. And Aquarage is coordinating this data and communicating to farmers. Founded, founded by James Odede, a member of our Kisumu Social and Economic Council, and I'm sure James is here, it would, <coughs> James is over there. Founded by James Odede, a member of our Kisumu Social and Economic Council, and Mrs. Dave Okej, <coughs> Aquarius has mobilized 1.7 million US dollars, about 60 million Kenya shillings, from the international financial market to support small scale farmers by providing quality feed and climate smart precision with feeding techniques, market access technical training and financial access, including a 90-day credit period to pay for feed. Mr. Speaker, sir, you realize that the Kisumu Economic and Social Council, including my friend Peter Doyle there, who is a member, are very really useful to the county because in that county, in that council, there are people with various entrepreneurial contacts globally and some good local knowledge of the Kisumu County economy. In the dairy and livestock subsectors, subsectors, we focused on the improvement of milk production, household incomes, nutrition, and food security in the county. We have so far distributed 515 calf dairy cows to 500 farmers, in addition to 706 dairy and gala goods, resulting into a 10% increase in annual milk production in the past two years. And I would like to encourage our farmers that when they get these improved breeds, that should improve their farm and their production. Please encourage them not to sell them, even when they have fees difficulties, because it's very difficult to acquire and get such animals which improve your breed. Through the commercialization of poultry production, we distributed 49,919 day old chicks to farmer groups, compromising women and youth, leading to increased household income and improved food and nutrients in the last two years. We have, in addition, trained 7,000 farmers on best practices to improve productivity in the livestock sector. Now, let me go to the sector of um, sector of water, environment, natural resources, climate change. I'll be brief here. Mr. Speaker, sir, five years ago, God Tooth Village in Kisumu West Sub County was a common feature in the media. The news was that local villagers lost their loved ones to crocodiles as they walked to Lake Victoria to fetch water. Their sufferings finally came to an end this year after we completed and commissioned a water project there that was started in the year 2022. 2022-2023 financial year. The God Puth Water Project, which consists of a solar-powered borehole, complete with storage tanks, currently serves over 10,000 residents, and their women are safe from the crocodiles. 
Our focus has been on developing new water infrastructure, rehabilitating and augmenting existing viable water supplies, networking partnerships, and collaborations for upscale safe water service provision. A total of 52 water projects were constructed across the country, while 14 non-functional water facilities were re rehabilitated since 2021. Mr. Speaker, sir, in a bid to combat the effects of climate change and ensure sustainable management of water facilities, we embarked on solarization of all our water facilities. Ten boreholes that were either pumped manually or installed with electrically driven pumps, which you know are very expensive under the present KPLC rates. With electrical driven pumps, we upgraded and equipped with solar driven pumps, which have become more manageable economically. We also commissioned the Kanyipola Water Project in Nyando Sub County. The project is equipped with a solar bridge pump with a 10,000 liters capacity water tank and is expected to transform the lives of over 1,500 residents in the area. The Kibigori Water Project in Burundi Sub County will, on the other hand, transform the lives of 3,500 residents within the Kibigori Sub Junction market and its environs, while the Koyo Kowe Project in Seme Sub County will save the local villagers from trekking long distances in search of water. It will also improve services at Koyo Kowe Dispensary, bringing the total number of beneficiaries to 1,500. With support from partners, Mr. Speaker, sir, we have managed to increase access to safe water to reach approximately 21,000 residents through the development of 27 new water facilities and the rehabilitation of 14 water facilities. Some of the projects include St. Martin Deporest Jebondo Water Project, supported by Living Water Services Centre in Nyakaisa County, and Kochogo Water Project, supported by Habitat for Humanity. Mr. Speaker, sir, honourable members, our forest cover.